Target number two has been spotted in DC. Another one of Captain Lewis's lieutenants, her name is Sergeant Daniels. An army veteran and sadistic killer, Daniels is known for her brutality and unwavering tendency towards public execution of civilians in the street. Michelle Daniels. Her great-grandfather was a proud Confederate soldier. Her grandfather, an army man. Her father, an army man. And her brother, an army man. A proud and male-dominated family, with deep roots entrenched in patriarchy and service to their country. The loss of her mother during Daniel's birth meant that she never truly had a maternal figure to help advise and guide her while growing up. Maybe the softness of a mother could have shaped her differently made her gentle and possibly even meant a different path in her life. Yet irregardless, she grew up tough. She had a hardness about her that even the boys lacked. She was gritty, callous, and at times indifferent and cold. Taking a life was easy. There were never any regrets. And why should there be? It was her right. She was an apex hunter. Others noted with alarm her seemingly dismissive nature in regards to taking a life. When she fished, when she hunted, and that sharpening her rifle skills was more important than anything else. Yet her father always insisted that Daniel's demeanor was just the result of not having a mother, growing up around a multitude of males, and adopting a tomboy attitude in order to survive. Contradictory to her father's efforts in stopping the rumors, Daniel's never felt she needed to justify herself. Her attitude had always served her well in the past, and this proved successful in the army as well, and she took immense pleasure in testing and pushing the boundaries of new recruits to see if she could break them. Unsurprisingly, her actions were noticed by her superiors, and as a result, she was repeatedly written up for objectionable behavior unbecoming of an officer. After serving in one tour, she returned back to her life and hometown as a civilian. There, she began to work for her father in his tackle shop and hosting guided fishing tours on the Potomac River. Unsatisfied and discontented with this lifestyle, a year after leaving the army, she enlisted with the National Guard in the hopes of finding some excitement and to stave off further boredom, while also continuing to work as a river guide. With the outbreak of the deadly virus, the National Guard was activated in Washington DC, and she, like so many others, would eventually be merged into the JTF. Anything and everything necessary to save what remained, Daniels was undaunted by the task and ready to get to work. But eventually she became aware of Antoine Ridgway, his ideals, and his loyal men the true sons. This was the moment she had been training for. Finally a leader who wasn't afraid to do what was necessary. Someone she could admire, who would appreciate her strengths and recognize her indifferences towards others and death to be assets rather than liabilities. Not long after Agent Dusk defected from the division, she met Daniels and they would become strong allies and friends. After Antoine Ridgeway's death, when the True Sons were demoralized, broken, and severely short on supplies and weapons, Dusk made contact with Schaefer to negotiate the terms of him providing the True Sons with support. Nervous about going to meet him alone, Dusk reached out to Daniels for backup. Dusk to Sergeant Daniels. Come in, Daniels. This is Daniels. What can I do for you, Dusk? You free tomorrow? Not really. What do you need? I've got to meet with Schaefer. He didn't show for the last one. Something feels off. Could really use someone I trust to have my back. Oh, I thought you wanted alone time with your boyfriend. Gross. Gross. I don't know what Faye is thinking working with him. I don't know if I could trust this guy. Ah, he's Black Task, but he's a Boy Scout. We talking about the same Schaefer? He want that backup or not? Better safe than sorry. I can't make it, but I can lend you a couple of guards. Thanks, Daniels. I owe you one. Mm, more like 20. In order to get the food and the equipment for her true sons to survive and rebuild, Dusk would have to join Schaefer on an operation he would soon be carrying out in DC. Dusk and her guard of true sons were to run point in the southeastern districts of the city, capturing multiple sites of interest in East Mall, Southwest, and Capitol Hill. But ultimately, this was a suicide mission. 
merely a distraction. Dusk and her accompanying true sons would one by one be hunted down by the division and eliminated. And eventually, even Schaefer would end up being captured on Coney Island. Daniels took the loss of her friend very hard and demanded revenge. So she approached General Anderson for orders on how to proceed. General Anderson, status report. Division took Dusk off the board. That's too bad. We need to counterstrike. Uh, negative, Daniels. But she was one of ours. She was a true son. She was a rogue agent first. She was one of us, but she was also one of them. And with loyalties as fluid as Dusk's, there's no way to know if she was playing her own angle. No, 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 no. I sent my men with her. And in time, we will avenge them, but not today. We need to see how this plays out. Schaefer's to blame, General. We don't know that for sure, but I will look into it personally. We can't keep working with the Black Tusk. <sighs> They're a liability. You may be right. There are too many rogues in their organization. Who knows what they're really planning? And with Ellis in their pocket, proceed with caution. General Anderson simply brushed this off as an acceptable loss. To him, Dusk was a turncoat and would have more than likely done the same thing to the true sons when it suited her. Yet he did agree that working with the Black Tusk was potentially the wrong direction going forward. After the death of Fei Lau at Camp White Oak, Sergeant Daniels was sent by Captain Lewis to Washington DC as part of his specialized team. There she seemed to be looking for something as reports indicated a multitude of civilian interrogations acted out by her personally. But it would seem she wasn't getting the outcome she needed. General Anderson? Yes, Sergeant Daniels, how can I help you? Captain Lewis said I should talk to you. I want permission to use advanced interrogation techniques. Sergeant? I know that if I can push them a little harder, I can get them to tell us what they know about the hunt. You don't need my permission to do what you feel is necessary. I trust your judgment. Thank you, sir. If your methods produce results, that's all that matters. Oh, I'll get the answers we're looking for. Thank you for being so thorough. A true son leaves no stone unturned. We'll root out these snakes. Anderson was happy to oblige, especially if it would get the results that the true sons needed. However, these are the actions that would put Daniels on the division's radar. Agents would catch up to Sergeant Daniels in downtown West, where she and her true sons had set up a stronghold, capturing strategic points throughout the district. One by one they were taken down, and at the bank headquarters, division agents and Daniels met face to face. Although she was well defended, and her troop of true sons fought hard, the agents were able to persevere and fight through and eventually take her down. I feel like I need to address the elephant in the room. Accompanying these last two targets in the season nine manhunt, there have been some very spicy Fei Lao comms that have come through. I keep getting asked what I think of them or why I haven't talked about them yet. And that's fair, these certainly changed some things that I've talked about in the past, some quite significantly. But I've been sitting on them for now letting this new information sink in while my overactive brain starts connecting the dots throughout the entire Division 1 and 2 story, making sure I haven't missed anything. I promise before the next Manhunt target is released, I'll be digging right into these new comms, so keep an eye out. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!